<laughs> My name is Alexis Sarnell. I am a core values judge. I've been judging for a few years, so <laughs> I know a little bit. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I am also a substitute teacher, and I have my degree in electrical engineering. So, this is core values. <laughs> and this is the new list that I think came out this year, am I right? Of core values. And it's just a little overview of we explore new skills and ideas, we use creative and persistence to solve problems, we apply what we learn to improve our world. We respect each other and embrace our differences. We are stronger when we work together and we enjoy and celebrate what we do. Now, core values is actually very completely different from project and robot design. <laughs> Cause you don't get new core values every year. You don't research and you know find new ideas to come up with core values. It's how your students interpret how they show these values in their everyday life. So in core values, you don't just get judged in the judging room. It is something you show during your whole entire stay at the competitions and how your students interpret this towards others. So here is the updated <laughs> rubric and we are going to go over this a little differently. Uh, but to start off with, team identity and respect and inclusion are something that are observed, mainly during core values. During this, your team shows you know, how much they enjoy working together, what is their team spirit, you know, do they, you know, how they come up with their t-shirt idea, you know, where they get their team name, these kind of things show how well your students you know, just want to represent and tell you about who they are. Respect and inclusion is how they interact with each other. Do they uh, shush each other during the activity? Do they, is one person saying, hey, you know, let's do it this way, let's do it this way, and everyone's just really ignoring them, not letting them get their input. It's, you know, we like to see how they interact with each other as a team. So this is how I'm gonna go about this today. So every time you come into the core values room, you have an activity. You start this activity, the judges will tell you you have so much time, you come in, and that's the activity. It's right over there, you have like three minutes to do the activity. And then after that, they go into their presentation. And then we spend a couple minutes asking questions just to get more detail. So I'm going to go and tell you how which part of the rubrics we look at doing each portion. So for the activity, we look a lot at teamwork. Do they interact well together? Are they coming up with a plan? Do they have a goal in mind? Did they read the rubric? Are they all working together to complete this activity? This is something we look for to see if they're being effective and efficient. They have three minutes or so to get this activity done. So they have to manage their time properly. Are they using the resources at hand to effectively get this done? And, you know, we like to see how they work without any coach guidance. You know, the coach isn't there telling them this is what you, you know, the, the coach isn't reading it to them. They are reading it, they're coming up with a goal, they're coming up with a plan. Okay, so for activity and a strong team. Really a strong team comes in and they, you know, they work as a team. You have, sometimes you have big groups and sometimes you have small groups. They work together in their group, making sure everyone is included, making sure everyone has a chance to work on the project, work on, work on the activity, do something. And they, they take an input. So, Usually, all these groups, they have multiple ideas. What I, like to, what I like to see is everyone taking the time to listen to all the students, to listen to you know, what their teammates have to say, and giving back positive reinforcement. Encouraging them, saying that, you know, I like your idea, but this idea seems more of 
you know, more effective. It might be more, you know, take in this time limit. This idea is probably the best one we should go with. Not, your idea sucks. <laughs> you don't want to hear that. You don't want somebody to say, your idea just really, your idea sucks. Because then you're like, oh, well then. Because that discourages that person from speaking up. We don't want to discourage them. We want to encourage them to, you know, speak their mind. So we like to have positive reinforcement from each other. And really, I like when it, like that activity, sometimes you have to be like really quiet. So I like it when they have fun. I like, you know, you hear giggling. It's not, <laughs> I don't like it when they're this like cramped up and they're like forcing each other like, oh my gosh, we have, it's not about finishing. It is not about finishing the activity. It's how they work together as a team. So <laughs> that is one of the things that I, I see a lot with the students. They come in and they're like, oh my gosh, we got three minutes. We've got to get this done. We've got to get this done. And it's like, guys, just relax. Show me how you work as a team. How do you do this? How do you come up with a process? This is stuff that if you had a time limit, you know, doing an activity with your team and your like team workouts, you know, how do you go about this? I want to see your process. Okay, uh, does anybody have any questions about the activity portion? Okay. So the presentation. The presentation, we look more for the inspiration and gracious, gracious professionalism. This is because when you have a certain time limit for your presentation, and then the judges will ask questions. But with the activity, we see a lot of your teamwork a lot of your effectiveness and how your students respect one another. So, during this, I like to see, you know, do they tell me how many examples, you know, how many examples, like, are, how do they show their core values? And, and, like, everyday life, that's one of my favorite questions to actually ask. I like to know what the students, how they interpret their core values, because everyone interprets them differently. So, for the inspiration, we really like to know how your students balance. Now they have their robot and they have their project. How do they go about balancing these two? But also in the mix, and your students gotta remember they're in core values. <laughs> so they need to, how do they add their core values to their robot, to their project? Do they have fun with it? Do, you know, they work as a team. I mean, I wanna know how they balance everything because there is so much they have to get done during the season. Is your team enjoying the competition and having fun? You know, I like to hear from them during the, the, their presentation, you know, are they having fun at the competition? You know, is, you know, are they enjoying it? Are they, do they seem a little not wanting to be there? Because this is something that, you know, one of the, core values is we have fun, or it was on there before, but we have fun is one of them. And we really want to, them to enjoy themselves. This isn't something they should stress too much about. It's something like when they come into judging, we're a little more stressed than they are about judging them because we want to make sure that they get all the time they need to actually make a point of telling us who they are, telling us what their favorite core values are. Gracious professionalism. This one is a little, it's a little tricky. So, how do they show gracious professionalism? Do they encourage other teams during the competition? Are they, how are they interacting with the, these other teams? Are they showing them respect? Are they showing, you know, the judges, the uh, volunteers? Are they showing them respect? You know, being fair. That fairness and in Integrity is actually something new, <laughs> uh, actually on the GP one. So, are, are they speaking to each other? Like, are they being very respectful when they speak to each other? Are they being respectful when they talk to volunteers, when they talk to judges? Okay, a strong team for presentation. Str presentation is 
One where I like the students to talk to me. They, I have students who come in and they look and they read and they're looking at their poster and they're not looking and I can't hear them. And so they're reading off their poster and they're reading at the poster and I can't hear them. I don't have eye contact with them. I like to know that, you know, I don't, they can be prepared and they can have things to read to me. I like to hear them and I can't hear them if they are talking to their poster and not me. Um, I like for them to really understand and understand what the core values mean to them. It doesn't have to be, you know, anything elaborate. But what does the core values mean to them? How does this, you know, make a difference in their lives and in the lives of others? And how do they share their core values? Like, do they mentor rookie teams? Do they, you know, go and share their projects with their community? Do they tell their school about, you know, FLL? You know, how do they just show all their core values? Okay, any questions about presentation? Okay. Okay, so the question portion is really, we're looking for detail. Sometimes we didn't, they may have said something about uh, a portion of the rubric and, and the judges just didn't hear them or they were talking too fast and that is okay. We'll ask a question and we'll try to get as much detail from your students as possible. We like to hear, you know, multiple question, like multiple answers for questions. Like my favorite question, you know, how do they show their core values? I like to hear from a lot of different students because they show them in different ways. Each student is different and they interpret core values differently. So I like to know how do they show core values? What does core values mean to them? How has it changed them? How has learning these new things, working in teams, coming to these competitions, how does it affect them? And how will it continue to affect them? And then you have last minute questions. And these are basically, the judges are looking, you know, for your team to give multiple examples. For when it's the last minute and you hear a question like, what should we know about your team? What's important about your team? We wanna hear from basically all your students. <laughs> but they don't all have to speak at this point. And at some, during the competition, during the question portion, we do like to hear, like if there are some students who just aren't speaking, we like to ask those students specifically questions. Now, they, some, <laughs> I've had it where students don't answer the question and that is perfectly okay. <clears throat> because being put on the spot, I'm not good at answering a question like that either. <laughs> so. We try to make, we try to either ask them a different question, maybe an easier question, but we want to hear, you know, from that student. So they all should be prepared to speak to the judges. And like I said, the judges are, we're very <laughs> laid back. We don't, we're not going, I can't really say we're not going to judge them basically on what they say, because we are, <laughs> but we're not, we're not there to be, cruel or you know mean about it we just want to know what they think and it could be it could be anything they could be except the one thing that you don't ever want to tell your core values judge <laughs> is that you're in this to win <laughs> that you've come and the only goal you have is to win if that's your only goal that's a little uh, it's a little no but winning is not a bad thing but how you interact especially with your core values <laughs> you know, coming and being prepared, talking, and they need to be prepared to talk to us. We like to ask a lot of questions. <laughs> um, and like I said, we like honest answers. We do, we like your students to be as honest with us as possible because if they're not honest about their answers, it's quite obvious and, you know, and it makes for a hard time because we're trying to really understand your students, your kids, because they're different from all the other kids. You have introverts, extroverts, and I think it's omniverts. It's a combination between extrovert and introvert. It's weird. <laughs> but all students are different, all groups are different, and we understand that. And we try to judge based on 
what we can interact with them. So if they are an introvert and they don't really like to talk, I'm not going to judge them differently. I'm not, I have a different sequence of judging them than I do with a extrovert. Because an introvert is different and an extrovert is different. They still get judged the same, but the way I go about it is different. Because not every student wants to answer questions. They get shy, they kind of come in. You're like you can have a team that comes in and they're just full of spirit. But then you can have a team that comes in, but when they talk to you, you can see their team spirit. I would say they have the same amount of team spirit because it's different for each person. I am a omnivert, so I am introvert and extrovert at different portions and times. So I understand that you know I can be like super passionate about electronics, but you get me up here talking about electronics, and I'm just going to be like. I can't remember, but I really enjoy that. <laughs> but you get me talking about, I don't know, I love teaching kids. You hear me about teaching kids? I'm all for it. I can talk to you all day long. But the way that I love them both equally, but I show them differently. So I try to take that into account when I talk to these students because they are different. Each student is different. Core values is different than robot and project because it's not really a, you don't have a guideline, a definition, like this has to be it. I did my research and I did this, this, and this. This is, this is how I act towards other people. This is how core values have come and taught me, you know, I can't just be all about me. I've got to be about my team and how I respect others. It's different for everybody. It's different for all the kids. <laughs> so I try to take that into account when I judge and when I teach new core values judges. When I get new core values people in a room with me, I'm like, OK, so all students are different. You got different styles. Some kids are really energetic and they really want to talk to you. And some kids don't want to look at you and talk to you. And it's all good. It is all good because that's just how they are as humans. So, does anyone have any questions? I know I may have gone through that quickly, but how quickly did I go through that? I went through that quickly. <laughs> any questions? Because core values is a, I don't think it's that. It's harder to judge. I do. I have a student, actually, I have two dyslexic students mm -hmm. on my team. One of them has auditory processing problems where she may not understand the question you're asking, so she may not answer. Mm -hmm. um, is there any way to account? I mean, you know, because it sounds like you really want each child to answer. I do like for them to answer. And if they can't answer, what I like for them to do is uh, what I like. What, and I say this as me because I've been judging this for a while. But what I like to hear is like, um, maybe if you, can you ask me a different question? or I try to ask them a simpler question, like something I may have heard them say okay. during the presentation. Because I like, I like to just hear a little bit from them during the questions. I like to hear a little bit from each student to, get, to gauge their, their teen spirit in a way, because I understand that some students, and I, when I substitute, I do substitute with, uh, I do a lot of substituting in the special ed, department so and my students they show me affection different ways some students ignore me <laughs> and it makes me really sad <laughs> but I know they like me because at some point they'll come and they'll tug on my shirt mm -hmm. but I like to I just like to get a little bit so you questions. would be one to know maybe you need to slow your question down yeah I would like I would slow my question down or I'd ask a simplified question okay. and sometimes if like they're turning red or something like that I will I will ask another question to somebody else on your team, just to kind of, or ask a very broad and general question. Because I don't want to make the students uncomfortable at any point during this. So if, if they start exhibiting features that, you know, I, that anyone could observe as the student is kind of going into a little meltdown of their own, I'd like to be able to be like, okay, well that is okay. If you can't answer it, that's all good. I'll 
So does anybody else have an answer for me? Or I'll give a very general like, so what do you, how do you guys, you know, show your team spirit to everybody? And that usually gets other kids really excited or somebody's like, oh, well, you know, our t-shirt design, we based it off of this, this, and this. So I really do try to deflect <laughs> at some points. I know when to deflect and when to ask a simple like, question. <laughs> Speech. And his motor. So even I have to ask him sometimes six different times what he says. But if another student that's been around him and picks up on that much can translate for you, mm -hmm. that would just be team fair. That would be like how they interact. Like that would be like, you know, they respect each other, but he understands that that student has, you know, an issue. And it's like, well, he is saying yada, yada, yada. And that would, that's, that's a really good to know that your teammate is having some trouble communicating. And it shows us that they understand their teammate and they understand that he has some issues and that they're willing to kind of step out and, you know, show, <laughs> be like, hey judges, I may not know you or like you, but. <laughs> yes. So like, cause I was listening to her and we had a little side thing. Um, so y'all are able to discern that a teammate is rescuing a teammate instead of like, overtaking. Okay, so with the judges I've judged with, and I've judged with a few, like, I do the qualifier, the the state, and the uh, Razorback. Um, they can discern, basically, if your student steps out and is like, he said yada, yada, yada. We understand that that's him saying that this is what he's saying. And we can, I mean, that Deciding that shouldn't be too difficult. The core values judges are <laughs> we're really weird. <laughs> we're really weird, and I tell them every time I have somebody new, I'm like, okay, well, this is how this is gonna go down. <laughs> I like to I like to prepare and be pre prepared for a situation that because you get all sorts of situations. We had we had a student with well, we've had we've had several students. That, I mean, I'm in a, I try to be inclusive in my kid, and I've had uh, several kids on the spectrum that don't make eye contact, have a very hard time communicating yeah. to people, and it's always been put in the comments about that. Like, they yeah. didn't participate, they didn't look at, they didn't seem like they were paying attention, but if they're on the spectrum, that's the best they could do. Yeah. I felt like I needed to defend them, but I'm not allowed to do that. So, <laughs> it's like, hey. so, and that's where like our kids would rescue their teammates. Oh, okay. oh yeah. So, okay, go. so the, the thing to do, if, if you have a, a child with any type of, on your team with any type of communication disorder or anything else that you think could make them at a disadvantage in terms of the, the rubrics, right? Then the thing to do is to put as much as you're willing to in, in writing and um, give it to the to the judge advisor at the opening ceremony. Mm -hmm. And that way the, the judges can be notified of that situation before your team ever enters the judgment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and that, this happens to core values no, a the, lot. The yeah. That's where mine always, yeah. yeah. If you, it, this does, this happens quite a bit. Like if you have a student that's at a disadvantage at all, the judges really like to know because then we can assess it better. So we're not assessing on, on the fly. It's not like, okay, uh, you seem like you don't, you're a little uncomfortable. We like to know. We like to know because that changes our judging questions and a little bit of our judging style. Well, at least for me, and I say for me because I, I, I've only judged core values. And I've only been judging core values for, I think, like, four or five years, <laughs> I can't remember. And so this is something that I just, I understand with your students who do that, because that's what I used to do. It's like, I'm paying attention, but I don't want to look at you. It's like, I don't want to make eye contact with you. And that that is okay. <laughs> yeah. It's hard, it's hard to make eye contact. It's hard to talk. It's hard to do much of anything. And they get really rigid and they get still and they don't want to talk to you. And that's okay. Do you have uh, advice for 
like the, the cooperation, I guess, or yeah, the, the portion of core values that it's all about community engagement. Oh. Um, do you have advice for that as we, as we lead sixth and seventh graders and as we also just have busy lives as coaches in our, our own lives? Mm -hmm. like, like, what, what type of community outreach are we really, are you really looking for? Are you looking for a whole organized events? Or? So everybody is different. Everybody, every team is different. Some teams go just like above and beyond and some teams, you know, they do the best they can with what they're given. Now, not every team has the same opportunities as others, which is something we all take into account. Um, what I'm looking for is, you know, do they, you know, maybe they share at like a school event or they share with their friends or they, their families, they like get together and, you know, they give, I haven't really had any students just tell me they like give their presentations. Like they go out and they give their presentations and they talk about, you know, Hey, this is this is our project, or this is our robot. Come, come look at FLL. Like I, I, I mean, I have teams that do that. I'm talking about the whole. They tell me how they share their projects. They tell me how they share their robots. <laughs> they like their robots a lot. <laughs> but I like it when a team can tell me. You know, they've gone and they've tried to share. You know, even if it's just their core values with others, you know, they could be at a team sport event and like maybe one of their teammates, you know, is having a rough time, is having like, you know, is not very being very sportsman like. And, you know, they try to tell them about their core values. And that's just like a very specific, specific, oh, jeez. I can't talk. <laughs> I'm a little sick today. Uh, so, I'm not looking for like, they don't have to be like right on the dot, have this whole long life story for me. I just want to know how they share. How do they share their, you know, their core values, their project, their robot. It doesn't have to be anything like big and glamorous. Like they go out and they communicate with all the other teams in like Italy or something like that. I want to know how do they share in their own ways. Like, they go and I know some of these are like homeschool, so like they go to like maybe a community <coughs> event and they share their project. Because I'm not, to be quite frank with you, I'm not up to date on everything. Still getting there. But they share what they know. They share about their robot. They try to get other teams involved. Or maybe you have a rookie team and you're giving them pointers and you're telling them, hey, you know. This is how like a competition goes. I like to hear, you know, whatever they think, maybe them interacting with others about first. This is about core values. It's not about, you know, their project and their robot. It doesn't have to be. It's how do they, you know, share with their community about first and their core values. And again, this is core values. I want you kids to at least say core values once. <laughs> I'm not joking. Sometimes they like, I ask them how they balance. I want to know how do they balance robot project and core values. We're there. <laughs> You're in the core values room. <laughs> but, I mean, that's what I would say. Like, I want to know how they share. Thank you. Um, last year we were kind of confused on how to incorporate the poster in the presentation. Um, is there guidelines for that, or did you already address that? It. I mean, it just kind of felt like, do, we, do they point? We just said no. Well, if they would like to point to like a section, what I like to like, what I like to hear is like, I want to hear their voices. I would like for them to face me when they're doing their poster because I can't hear them when they're facing their posters, and that then I have to re-ask that question when I could ask a question, another question to further my understanding and details of the team. So you do want them to, I mean... If they, like, say we have a poster here, and, like, inclusion's way over here. Like, I've had students just kind of, like, get on the floor and be like, this is inclusion. <laughs> like, and they point at it, but they talk to me. <coughs> like, and they can point at it. They don't have to point at it. I can, usually you have it, like, in such big block letters that I can find it. But I'd like for them to, them to talk to me, them to tell me. And if your students have little printouts of what they need to say to me, that's, they'll say okay. I don't, I, I know how hard it is to memorize something and I have flashcards. I literally have flashcards in my purse because I didn't know what I was saying today. <laughs> but I mean, that's, that's okay. 
your students, like, we want to hear from them. And yes, I know some people are like, well, they don't like really rehearsed presentations for core values. I think it's something you need to practice, that all teams need to practice, is how you're going to come in there and how are you going to, like, how are you going to interact with the judges? We like, we like for them just to talk to us. <laughs> We've been sitting there all day and we just like to talk. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> oh. Good? Are you okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm a little sick. I've been subbing this week and all the kids are sick <laughs> this week. So. <laughs> Can I ask a bit okay. on the core values? Because last year we cut out the letters and tried to make it, you know, the kids try to make it neat and everything. I mean, that's not. We like for the posters to be neat. We like to, we like to see where they've got everything on their board. So we like. We like to be able to see where they have their headlines, like inclusion, gracious professionalism, okay. teamwork. So know. it's okay if I'm cutting out the letters. Like just cutting? Yeah, I've got a silhouette machine and I just cut them all out. Oh, I mean, for me, in my case, I, if you cut them out, that's, you know, you have a machine, they can't. One of the comments we got on ours last year was it didn't look kid made. But we right, that's, that's what I'm worried about because yeah. we ours wasn't kid made. I mean, they did it. They picked out the pictures, they put the backing on, they slapped, you know, I they put it all on. I taught the kids how to use the cricket. The kids did. I thought about doing that, that, but I still got slammed because it didn't look kid. Maybe right. use that, put it in your thing as part of their research. They learned how to do the cricket, and that uh, way they can, uh, that way they Well, that's the first time I've ever heard of a poster were saying that, because <laughs> I've never actually said that. <laughs> I People have different skills. And I mean, if you have a machine that you're doing on, you know, make sure your kids tell the judges during the thing. It's like, you know, this is our poster. You know, we may used a machine to. I may teach my daughter this year. <laughs> <laughs> we used a machine to do this, but you know, just getting out there. Because one of the big things for core values is we don't, we focus on making sure that this is what the kids have done, because the. Um, oh, where is it? The guidance, appropriate balance between team responsibility and coach guidance. Now this one, for me, is usually, you know, a no-brainer. Because the kids come in, they give me, they show their teamwork with the activity, they show that they can, you know, do all of this activity without a coach's guidance. So usually it's a no-brainer. But sometimes you do get judges who do look very specifically at different things like the poster. And I mean, just as long as, you know, your kids have been like, you know, our poster, you know, we use this machine to cut out everything to make it look neat. That should be just fine. Just like a little line in there about how they got their, how they did their posters. Cause I have kids that put like all sorts of pictures on there. It's like, oh, this, this picture right here, I put this picture up and this picture is when we were, you know, eating pizza. <laughs> having a party, you know, those are the kind of, you know, those are just the things that the kids tell us when they're, they get really excited about the posters and they get really excited to show us what they have put on there. And if they put quotes or anything, they're like, oh, this is this person's quote. And I think it's funny and I love it. I like it when your students are very honest. I like honest answers because if not, then I'm sitting there going, okay, how do I ask this question differently to get the, and we do, we do ask questions differently. Like, if they don't tell us the discovery, um, the team applied knowledge and skills and values learned in first legally to improve themselves in their world. That's gonna be something where we ask students and we want multiple answers. And if they don't give us multiple answers, we ask it in a different way to get multiple answers. So if your kids get the same sounding question, it's because we're looking for something and we're trying to get them to, we're trying to edge them into telling us what we need to know so we can fill out the rubric appropriately. Because we want all students to have the same opportunity to give us answers. And sometimes the questions are way different than somebody else's questions. So. 
Any other questions? <laughs> I'm all about questions, as you can tell. <sighs> Anything. My husband's telling me it's time to say. Okay, that is it for me. Thank you.